Dozens of range fires have been ignited by humans, vehicles, and lightning along the Interstate 84 corridor between Boise and Glens Ferry for decades. In fact, over the last 35 years, more than 170,000 acres have burned in the 294,000 acre area. 80% of the fires were human caused and 20% were ignited by lightning. Some of these areas have burned repeatedly, charring sagebrush and other vital perennial plants to the point where invasive species, such as cheatgrass, have overtaken burned over lands. But the Bureau of Land Management, the primary landowner in the project area between Boise and Glens Ferry, wants to try to stop the vicious fire cycle in this area. Ranchers do too. It's not only the worst hotspot in Idaho in terms of fire frequency, it's the worst hotspot in the nation. BLM experts say it's a deadly combination of vehicle ignitions, lightning strikes, and highly flammable cheatgrass that fuel the fire cycle. With a lot of uh, uh, you know, the travel corridors, uh, we're getting a lot of ignitions off of those because of the vehicles and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, we still have a lot of lightning uh, every summer. This is a lightning belt, and we get a lot of fires from lightning through here also. So you got, not only do you got the human factor overriding it, you got the invasion of cheatgrass on it, and then you've got the continuing lightning. All those three things together um, has led to where we've lost a lot of this habitat out here. The solution, endorsed by the BLM's New Paradigm Project, is to create 356 miles of fire breaks between Boise and Glens Ferry to give firefighters a better chance to stop fires when they're small. The fuel breaks will be created across the landscape on state, private, and BLM lands. The Idaho Department of Lands, the rancher-led Mountain Home Rangeland Fire Protection Association, and Idaho Transportation Department are all working together on the $7 million project. We're actually taking this to the landscape level, getting all this together across all of these different ownerships. Yeah, a lot of us in this area have been behind it for a long time. It's a double whammy these fires are for a lot of us in this area. We lose forage, which is a big asset to us, and, uh, and then we lose a lot of habitat too. Post-fire, ranchers have to find new places to graze their cattle because any public lands affected by the fires are typically closed for two growing seasons. That causes a hardship as well. When we do burn and we're two years off or longer, the rehab is, has been largely unsuccessful at some of these lower elevations when it does burn. We get a lot of annuals that come in after the fires. And then it's just devastating to the the, the creatures that live there, the burrowing owls, or a lot of things that need that sagebrush step. On BLM lands, the fuel breaks will be a mix of widened dirt roads and vegetative green strips. On private lands, ranchers from the Mountain Home RFPA are disking dirt strips next to the highway to prevent fires from burning rangelands. Along Interstate 84, ITD crews are mowing vegetation in the median placing gravel next to the highway shoulder to reduce ignition from vehicle fires, and planting green strips next to the freeway with the hardy perennial grass called crested wheatgrass. Uh, we have a, uh, another green strip on this other side of the fence. This is actually in the right of way for the interstate. It's treated with an herbicide to remove the cheatgrass and then seeded to crested wheatgrass. It's very green right now as summer moves through it will tend to dry out, uh, but the good thing about it is it still keeps cheatgrass down, so it breaks up the fuel continuity, which reduces the likelihood of a wildfire. It's been real successful uh, working with the Idaho Department of Transportation. Our ignitions between uh, Boise and Mountain Home have literally just gone down almost nothing. Pellant has been working on reducing the wildfire risk for several decades with a variety of green strip projects for the BLM. Over the years, they found that a perennial shrub, forage kochia, works best. Yeah, this forage kochia, this is what we call a half shrub, so a low-growing shrub, that uh, its origins were Central Asia. It's basically evolved with cheatgrass at the time, 
And uh, what we've really found, one of the real benefits of it is it's very fire resistant. It stays green throughout the summer, has a high moisture content, doesn't have volatile oil, so it doesn't have any explosive quality. And kind of the, the, the best benefit then from a resource standpoint is it's also very palatable and very nutritious for both livestock, for wildlife. We started using it in the mid 80s as a, as a green strip species. Basically trying to break up fires by putting strips of fire resistant vegetation at strategic locations. And we found over the years, this is uh, probably by far the most effective plant that we can use to stop wildfires in the summer. So there's been three occasions over the past 20 years, the small fire had started and literally got to the forage kosher and stopped or went through it a little, but didn't uh, go beyond and start a big fire. On one of those fires, we actually looked at the forage kosher, how much moisture it had. And we found in late August, it was 38% water in the plant, which is very important in terms of being fire resistant. We looked at cheatgrass and it had 1% moisture. Crested wheatgrass, which is commonly planted in green strips, 10% moisture. So take home message is, the more moisture you have in a plant, the more water, the better it is at slowing or stopping the fire. Over the years, the BLM planted more than 500 miles of green strips in southwest Idaho to prevent fires. The Paradigm Project takes the fire prevention program to the next level with an integrated approach of fuel breaks across the landscape. For one thing, the fuel breaks will be much more extensive and wider than before to give firefighters a better chance to stop a wildfire. When wildfires race across the landscape, the flame lengths may reach 12 to 18 feet high in sagebrush and four to six feet high in cheatgrass, experts say. And as, flame, as fires move into these fuel breaks, they not only break apart, but that flame rank gets reduced quite a bit. And uh, what we're looking for in regards to firefighting and, and holding is a flame length that's, that's four feet or less is where we can really start making hay. There's three, there's three legs to a fire triangle. Uh, one leg is oxygen, the other leg is heat, which is, which is the amount of heat it takes to bring a fuel to ignition temperature. And then the, the third leg is, is fuels. And you have to have all three legs of the fire triangle to have an ignition and sustain it. If you break any one of those legs, in other words, if you take oxygen away, it can't burn, right? So land management agency control over is the fuel. To bolster fire breaks along dirt roads, the BLM will disc a wider swath as much as 100 feet wide on both sides. They also plan to mow vegetation on both sides of the road in cases where sagebrush and robust vegetation are present. They expect to use targeted grazing in some instances for the same purpose. Yes, I, I definitely believe it will help. The, the BLM's been very efficient. Those guys are firefighters and they understood what it takes to build a fire break for firefighters. In this area, we get tremendous wind events. Like today, you know, today is very typical. And so when you get that and continuous fuels, you're gonna have to have something of some width that's gonna let that fire come in, knock the flame links down. And so I think they got it. Those guys know, and, and they've set some boundaries that we're, kind of, we're trying to follow on private ground and state ground and, and match what they're doing. Overall, land managers and ranchers are hoping they can stop range fires quickly in the corridor on a consistent basis so they could begin work on restoring the landscape. Our argument is, is that if you want to get sagebrush back on this landscape and make it a um, somewhat of a, a, a bunch grass plant community again, well, if it takes 35 or 40 years to grow a stand of sagebrush on the Snake River Plain, but it burns every two to seven, are we ever going to rehabilitate that and ever get back to what it was? You, it's physically impossible. So the first step to rehabilitation of that is to stabilize the fire situation. Stopping the fire cycle along the freeway corridor also would allow the BLM to improve habitat in the Morley Nelson Snake River Birds of Prey National Conservation Area, an area that supports more than 700 nesting pairs of birds of prey, the most in North America. Since the late 1970s, more than two-thirds of the shrub steppe habitat has been lost in the birds of prey area, 
likely causing a downturn in jackrabbits and golden eagles that nest in the canyon. Golden eagles, for example, I think historically the, the high number for them were probably in the range of 28 to 30 pairs of nesting eagles. And it's, it's hard to make a, a you know, statistical link between a decline, but I think right now we're, we're probably somewhere in the range of maybe 22 to 24 pairs of eagles. Because we have lost a lot of that prey habitat. And in order to maintain populations, you need the prey base to feed all these eagles. Prairie falcon populations have not been as affected by the loss of shrub habitat. They feed mostly on ground squirrels. But whether or not that's causing some changes in populations is hard to say. Another part of the solution will be to reduce human-caused fires along the freeway corridor via public education and advertising. Many of the human-caused fires are a result of catalytic converters failing vehicle or trailer bearings failing, flat tires throwing out sparks, or people simply tossing a burning cigarette out their window. The Idaho Rangeland Resource Commission has posted fire prevention posters at the I-84 rest stop between Boise and Mountain Home. State and federal agencies are also working on fire prevention campaigns. There's the One Less Spark Fire Prevention Campaign Firewise fire prevention principles, which is clearing flammable objects away from homes, plus outreach to K-12 students in schools, public outreach meetings, and a website called Idaho Fire Info. In regards to education, yeah, I, I, we want the public to really pay attention to that. A big uh, ignition source for us over time has been uh, the bearings and trailers. So if you can do your part in regards to uh, maintaining your vehicle and trailers, uh, that's going to help reduce ignitions. We have a program, Firewise, uh, that we're really involved with here in the Boise District. And looking at these communities, especially up against the wildland urban interface, and what can those communities do to, to help mitigate fire fuels around their uh, homes and uh, help us out us by providing that defensible space. We can uh, not be tied down and so focused on protecting your homes, then we can put more resources on the rangeland fires and help protect that habitat from burning up. In the meantime, BLM plans to begin seeding green strips and creating fuel breaks next to the road this fall to implement the Paradigm Project. Ranchers and ITD already are moving ahead with their part of the plan. And then, only time will tell if the multi-pronged plan works to stop the vicious fire cycle in southwest Idaho. You gotta stop the cycle. Everybody's kind of working together to figure this out.